I would like to give you one more example before I end my speech. That for the past few months, those people who belong to the Indian subcontinent, and now it has spread internationally. You know of the issue of Sania Mirza. Have you heard of Sania Mirza? Wow, oh, wow, mashallah. See, everyone knows. Why? Because of the media. Everyone knows of Sanya Mirza. Why? Because of the media. And the media gave her publicity. You know why? Why? Because she was a Muslim. Not only because she was a Muslim, because she was a Muslim and wearing clothes, skirts and shorts. It happened so that last issue of Time magazine, I think it was the last week of September or the first week of October 2005. She came on front page, Sanya Mirza front page, wearing a skirt and playing tennis. Why? You know why? All of us know. For the past couple of months, the media was giving a hype. The fatwa was there that what clothes she is wearing, the mini skirts is haram. It is prohibited. And there's a big hue and cry. All the media, all the television channels going to Muslim ulamas and scholars. Is it right or wrong? And most of them saying haram, haram, haram and blowing it out of proportion. This is what the media does. It uses information and the way it presents it. So non-Muslim will think, what kind of a religion is this? There is a sportswoman and the religion is trying to stop her. What is there in Islam is a haq. We can't change it. What is wrong is wrong. But how do you convey the message is important. Allah says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. When I was given the opportunity, I normally don't speak to the media. I've got my own reasons to the normal media and I'll tell you why later on. I'll tell you why later on. But we normally have a weekly gathering in Bombay where I handle question and session. There are a few hundred people who gather there. And then this question was asked to me. And I told them that you should know how to reply to the media. My first question to the international media is that why are you going and asking the Muslim ulama, the Muslim shiuk, the Muslim scholars, whether the clothes Sanya Mirza is wearing is right or wrong. She is only 34th seed. How much? 34th seed. Why don't you go and ask the Christian priest about Serena Williams? Serena Williams is seed number one. Why don't you go and ask the Christian priest that what clothes Serena Williams is wearing is right or wrong? Why don't you ask? Why don't you go and ask the Pope in Vatican that the clothes Serena Williams and most of the people above Sanya Mirza, 33, majority are Christians. Why don't you go and ask the Christian priest and the Pope the clothes she's wearing is right or wrong? If you read the Christian Bible, the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 22, verse number 5, the woman shall not wear clothes that which pertinent to a man, and a man shall not wear women's clothes. All those who do that are an abomination to the Lord. It's mentioned in the first Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 9, that the woman should be dressed up modestly with sobriety. They should not wear braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array a Christian woman is supposed to be covered you see the example of the nuns how are the nuns the nuns are dressed up like the Muslima if you have seen the photograph of mother Mary may Allah be pleased with her she is completely covered from head to toe only a face and hands up to the rest is seen you go and ask the Pope or the Christian priest if a nun takes out her hijab and if she plays tennis in the skirts what fatwa will you give what opinion will you give? For us, every Muslim, every Muslim woman is as pious as the nuns according to them. They are modest. We should know how to reply to the media. There were two groups amongst the Muslims. Most of the ulama and shiuks, they said it is wrong. A couple of them, they give the fatwa right from where, I don't know. But the so-called modern Muslim, inverted commas, you know what they said? In sports, why should Islam come in between? One Muslim politician said that these shiuks, these ulmas, they don't know about sports so they should keep their mouth shut. I am telling this politician, if he does not know Islam, he should keep his mouth shut. There were Hindu politicians 
who said that Sania Mirza is the pride of our country. Any Indian who speaks against Sania Mirza is a desh dohi, is unpatriotic statements. I told that any person who supports the clothing of Sanya Mirza is going against the Vedas. Because the Hindu Veda says in Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 85, verse number 30, the woman shall not wear clothes of the man and the man should not wear clothes of the wife. It further mentioned Rig Ved, book number 8, hymn number 33, verse number 19. It says that Brahma, Almighty God, has made you a woman, so lower your gaze and wear the veil. So in Hindu scripture, also wearing skirts is haram. So any Indian who's supporting wearing skirt, I told that Hindu politician is going against the Hindu scriptures. Turn the tables over. Why are we in the firing line? Why don't they ask the Hindus? Is it an Indian culture? And further, there was another Hindu politician who said that this is international sports. All these politicians, they belong to the same, whether the Hindu, Muslim, Christian. <laughs> Most of them, the birds of the same feather flock together. You know what did the Hindu politician? They said, it is an international sport. So you should maintain the dress code of the international sports. And people don't know that the clothes she wears, it improves the performance. I say, okay, I agree with you. We have to agree that the clothes that they prescribe, maybe the performance will be better. How much? Half percent? One percent? Agree. Don't argue. But if we see in history, 20 years back, 25 years back, 15 years back, when women wore dresses while playing sports like badminton, they wore full dresses. Even today in Iran, women are wearing full dresses, wearing scarves and playing. Even if I agree with you that the performance is better wearing shorts, I'm asking the Hindu politician, tomorrow if beach volleyball becomes an international sport, will you send your daughter? Will she wear bikinis? <laughs> tomorrow if beach volleyball becomes an international sport, so will you send your daughter wearing a bikini to play beach volleyball? Will the Indian culture give you permission? And we have to agree that in swimming, people wear less clothes so that they can perform better. That there is a gents only wear a brief and the woman they wear a bikini. But you have to understand and agree that if you wear no clothes, you will get the best performance. So will you prescribe the woman to swim nude? <laughs> Why the double standards? You say no, no, that is immodest. So your modesty level is here, our modesty level is here. Where is the cutoff point is important. What is modest for you is not modest for me. So why don't you prescribe that in swimming, the men and the women, they should swim nude. It will improve the performance, but no. They have the modesty level. So we should know how to reply and turn the tables over. Unfortunately, we are like sitting ducks. We have made ourselves a laughing stock in the media. Coming to the question, how should the ulmas reply? I am not against the ulmas because they aren't trained in the media. Normally, if someone asks me the Islamic viewpoint, what does Islam say about Sanya Mirza being a sportswoman and she's wearing such clothes? Is it right or is it wrong? My reply would be, before I speak about Sanya Mirza, I would like to tell you that there are Muslim gents who play cricket in Indian teams and the other teams. Many of them don't offer Salah. Say Muslim says in the book of Salah that the difference between Iman and Kuf is Salah. Salah is the most important pillar after Tawheed. Very important. The biggest sin after Shirk is not offering Salah. So according to me, the Muslim Jain sportsmen who play cricket and don't offer Salah are bigger sinners than Sanya Mirza. At least Sanya Mirza offers Salah. The Muslim actors and actresses, they do shirk on the screen, they are bigger sinners. 
आई एम नॉट ट्राइंग टू डिफेंड सानिया मिर्जा आई हैव टू अग्री द क्लोथ सानिया मिर्जा इज वेरिंग इज अगेंस्ट इस्लाम इट इज हराम बट बिफोर आई से दिस आई एम डायल्यूटिंग द इफेक्ट दिस इज हिकमा I am diluting the moment I say Christianity is against it, the effect is diluted. Hinduism is against it, the effect is diluted. Judaism is against it, effect is diluted. I am speaking about swimming. I am speaking about cricket. But when I give the answer, it is haram. It goes down their throat very well. Otherwise, they cannot digest it. I am saying that fine. At least Sanya Mirza is offering salah. She is a lesser sinner than those Muslim cricketers who don't offer salah. Full day cricket, five day cricket without salah. Allah has given her hidayah to offer salah. Maybe tomorrow she will wear proper Islamic clothes. Insha Allah. And the question whether she can play in a mixed gathering—that's another question. That doesn't mean I'm giving a fatwa. What she's doing is right. But we Muslims should know how to turn the tables over, how to give a reply with hikma. The moment you give this reply, the whole thing is tuned down. Unfortunately we make a laughing stock of ourselves in front of the media.